land between the lakes national recreation area is over 170,000 acres of forest, wetlands, and open lands on the peninsula between the Kentucky and Barkley Lakes. It is one of the largest blocks of undeveloped forest in the eastern United States. Let's take a look. Well, Land Between Lakes was created uh, originally as a way to boost the economic uh, potential of this area. Uh, it was also created for recreational purposes, uh, but also as a way to teach the, 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 the folks around here as well as people from around the nation of, uh, about the environment around them. And it gave them a good opportunity to experience it here at Land Between Lakes. This is a wild place. It's, it's, a, it's a place where people can have a, a true experience out there in the wild. And, and you know, in today's modern world, uh, it's so important to get kids out into the woods and to get families back out into, uh, into the countryside. It's something that they just don't experience or appreciate as much as, as probably is necessary. Um, there's so much for the wild to offer and so much that we can learn about ourselves. In 1996, elk were released into a 700-acre enclosure that had been restored as an example of the original prairie habitat. Since that time, the elk and bison populations have thrived, and it's now a popular destination at Land Between the Lakes. We're maintaining our bison herd around 35 adults, and then they, they produce about 20 young, 20 young calves each year. The elk are they're really hard to track what's going on with them they're very secretive when it comes time to have calves uh, they're also called calves but it's always a game trying to see who has a calf and who doesn't because unlike the bison which are up and moving around with the herd within a, a day or two the uh, the elk hide their young in the in the woods or in the, a tall grassy field and just leave them there for hours each day and then uh, They'll come back, the mother will leave the herd where she's hanging out, make sure nobody's looking, come back, feed them. The little fellow get up, you know, get a little milk, and then she'll bark at him, he'll lay down and hide somewhere, and she'll take off again. And hope she's not spotted during that process. The calves of elk are pretty scent free, and so that's their defense, is to lie still, stay quiet, and if anything comes by, don't move. So if you have a coyote or something sneaking around looking for them, it could walk right by them and not know they're there. People have a, a fascination with these large furry critters. You know, they travel out west to go see them, and sometimes they don't see them when they go out there. Uh, you know, the bison are, you know, they gotta go to Yellowstone Park or someplace far, far away to actually see them. And uh, so this allows local people that don't have the budget to go travel across the country every year or several years to bring their, their kids, their family, to, to see something kind of unique. A 3.5 mile loop brings visitors to areas frequented by the elk and bison. Timing is everything in a visit to the prairie. Early morning and late afternoon visitors can see both populations roaming the grasslands in search of food. Be on the lookout for other wildlife, such as turkey and songbirds, that inhabit the prairie as well. Other than elk and bison, which are the main attraction, the main reason for bringing this prairie back is actually all the other animals it benefits. You know, you have uh, numerous songbirds and uh, small mammals, and even some reptiles and amphibians that depend on this prairie type of habitat an open forest habitat, and these are types of habitat that are really decreasing, have decreased dramatically in the east, and we're trying to bring them back because these suites of animals have trouble finding places to nest or places to eat. You know, it may just be one part of their life they need this tall grass for, maybe nesting, and this is the only place they can find it, and then they can go eat somewhere else, or somebody else may need to eat here, and then they nest somewhere else that's plentiful. But all you need is one part of that habitat group that they are lacking, and that's all it takes for that animal not to be able to survive in the entire area here of their home range. 
The Woodlands Nature Station, also located in the land between the lakes, is an intimate introduction to the plants and species native to Kentucky. The Nature Station itself is a kind of a museum of natural history for their region. And we have a number of different species, wildlife species, that are native to the area, but they're also orphaned and injured and cannot be released back into the wild. So that's one of the reasons why we're, they have them here. Uh, each one of them has their own individual conservation story, and when its folks come to visit the, the nature station, they get to learn a little bit more about why the animals are here, but also a little bit more about the animals that they have here at Lane Between Lakes as well as in their own home. One of our highlights is uh, our bald eagle. Uh, she's been here for about 28 years. She was confiscated from somebody who had her illegally uh, as a pet. Um, and she's been, she'll probably be here for another 10, 12 years because they have a long lifespan. We've got bobcats. Um, we're one of the few places in uh, the, the country that have red wolves, a very rare species, probably one of the rarest mammals that we have here in the United States, also known as the southern wolf. Uh, we have a number of different owl and hawk species, uh, several different types of reptiles and snakes for those folks that really en enjoy the, the colder blood type. Uh, but uh, one of the things I, I think is particularly favorite for me is that when you come to the nature station you see our backyard, we have a number of different things that are attracted to a backyard, such as hummingbirds and orioles and purple martens and little brown bats. and. Uh, you see a lot of squirrels plus native gardens. Two years ago, this bird was a wild bird, and um, she ran into a barbed wire fence and got pretty tangled. And they weren't able to release her back into the wild because of that, because they had to amputate her wing. So that she had to be found a more permanent educational home, and that's what we do here. We provide them a home for the rest of their life, and they help us teach the, you guys a little bit more about them. They're kind of like our ambassadors. You want to close? The thing that kind of draws me to Land Between Lakes, but also just into this profession, is I've always liked wildlife. I, I think I always joke with people that I've been genetically inclined to this, this job uh, because really for me there was no other choice. I've, I've been crazy about animals all my life. Uh, and the nature station and Land Between Lakes gives me that opportunity. The thing I love about Land Between Lakes the most is that the incredible biodiversity, the number of bird species that you might come across here, the number of reptiles and amphibians, the number of mammals that you'll come to. I mean, you have so many different kinds of, of, of wildlife here because we're in this crossroads between north and south and east and west. It just makes it a, a bonanza of, of opportunities to experience them. One of the mottos that I always seem to like uh, when it comes to land between lakes is go outside and play and there's not enough of that I think I think I'd like to get more people out here and experience and go for a hike to go for a canoe paddle for uh, to take their um, four-wheeler out for a, a ride or the horses you know during the springtime uh, breeze I, I think those are, are some great opportunities for, for people and and myself uh, to enjoy